Hello guys and welcome back to Lesser Athletes. I'm Hanad and today we're going to be talking about Jalen Brown's contract extension and what it means for the Celtics moving forward. Um, this is a big topic of discussion recently since Jalen Brown just got his contract signed and obviously a lot of people are wondering how is this going to impact Boston going forward and I'm here to talk about that today. I just want to say this before we start the video. Thank you guys for all the support that you guys have been giving us. We've been growing at a fast rate and for this group of five guys that we've just been enjoying talking about basketball and everything we it means a lot to us more sports probably coming out soon uh 92 percent of y'all are not subscribed though and we would really love for more people to subscribe to us we love y'all we love everything we get out of this out of this channel and we put in a lot of work into these videos so thank you guys so much and yeah we'll continue with the video now that man Jalen brown got paid here uh, yeah, five-year, $304 million contract with a trade kicker and no player option here. Um, how I feel about this, I feel like that the Celtics probably had to do this in order to not like lose Jalen Brown in the next offseason. He made the All-NBA second team, which obviously led him to this kind of Supermax territory out here. So congrats to him on this kind of, on this kind of money. He's trying to do great things for the city of Boston overall, but the for, for the side of basketball this might be a slight bit of an overpay but i mean like to get a person that averages 20 almost 27 points per game and seven rebounds and not the best not the best playmaker but i mean you can deal with that sometimes especially when you have playmaking talent like malcolm brogdon jason tatum's improving as a playmaker i mean like Jalen brown just needs to be that great second option to score just you know be there just be there to be reliable at scoring for the team because he is their second option and he's going to be their second option moving forward it seems like especially with tatum due for a big payday at 300 like 35 million next year with this new tv deal this is the first wave of like the 300s going in so we'll be seeing that for the next like couple years i'd believe but yeah Jalen brown his trade kicker is a 15 percent bonus if he's traded so that's what the trade kicker means. No player options. Very interesting because I mean, like, dude, I mean, he can just stay. He's just going to stay there for five. Like he could, if he requests a trade, then, you know, it's going to be, he's going to make a lot of money off that, but like no player option. So he can't, he'll have to be an unrestricted free agent by the end of that. I think he's like 32 by then he's going to be making 70 million in his last year. So, I mean, like, that's a crazy deal, man. I mean, like all like props up to him because he deserves that. Like, at least as a player like as a person wise but like as a player he i feel like it might be a little bit more of an overpay but the celtics did need to give him that contract because i mean like he was just gonna leave for no reason so i mean like you take that for anything you will the celtics fans at all including me but yeah he's also the best second option in the league i mean obviously i think that's pretty clear maybe maybe that could be a conversation but yeah now we look at the payroll for the Celtics. They keep in their guys for the next two years, at least. They keep the main people. They have Porzingis signed on a new contract extension. Tatum is going to be super max next year, like 335 mil for five years. JB got his extension. Malcolm Brogdon is going to be here for the next two years. I mean, like, Malcolm Brogdon could be traded within the next year. You never know. His injury stuff could be an issue. Derek White's contract's an absolute steal. Uh, Robert Williams is also a very big steal. Uh, Al Horford's gonna be their veteran presence, obviously. Payne Pritchard might be traded, but I mean, with the new Celtics guard depth, I mean, they're, I think he's perfectly fine staying there. Uh, yeah, and then they keep their new signings, O'Shea Brissett. Uh, they got, uh, what is it, the new rookie, Jordan Walsh, under there. And Jordan Walsh was really good in Summer League, so I mean, I'm excited to see what he can bring. That defensive upside is very good there. We'll talk about that a little later. But yeah, Celtics have their guys locked up for the next two years. I mean, nothing much else you could say about that. I think that's really solid for them. There could be contenders for the next two years. Honestly, the only issue I really see with this is the fact that two guys are going to be taking up almost $600 million of your cap space in the next five years, next six years almost. Uh, so... It's gonna be interesting to see that, but obviously Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are honestly probably worth that because they are the best duo in the league, or arguably the best the best duo in the league, and they've been pretty consistent at making it decent playoff runs. But obviously there's playoff woes. Um, Jalen Brown and Tatum barely, I think they barely made it over the hump when it comes to making it to the finals. I mean, the last what is it six years now? Yeah, six years. He they have been. Uh, very 
they've been very iffy. They make the conference finals or they make it like a decent playoff run, except for that first round loss. But that was when Jalen Brown was injured. So I guess we don't really count that. But I mean, yeah, LeBron was going crazy in that 2017, 2018 conference finals. That was a rookie Tatum, uh, sophomore JB. I mean, you can't really say much about that. Uh, Gian, or Giannis was uh, going crazy that year. That was his MV, first MVP year, if I believe. Yeah, and then the next year was the bubble year. Uh, Tatum got balked by Bam. I mean, that's a pretty iconic moment from that playoff run. But I mean, like, obviously the Celtics, yeah, they did not have the best series. They should have, I think they should have actually won that series if it wasn't for them going to seven with Toronto the series, or the series before. But I mean, like, that was that was them leaving OG and Obi open in a corner for three. I mean, you can't really talk too much about that. Uh, the next year was the Nets. They lost in the first round, but obviously that I just said it was a Jalen Brown injury and Tatum had to literally carry that roster and the Nets are broken. I mean, like James Harden, Kyrie, KD. I mean, you can't really do much about that. That's, that's a difficult team to deal with. Uh, the next year, that was when they actually made it over the hump of the conference finals. They made the finals for the first time and lost to a red hot Steph Curry, who was trying to get his fourth ring, trying to get his finals MVP. I mean, like he was he was amazing that series i mean you can't deny it and uh the celtics really did crumble under that pressure uh tatum showed his uh finals weaknesses everyone talks about uh i think that was just uh them their defense catering towards tatum but jalen brown did perform pretty solidly but obviously as a second option who is has to take over the first option who's getting defended like crazy i mean like you should be scoring a lot and yeah and then game seven of this year where they were down 0-3 yeah, that was a rough first three games. I mean, after that, it was amazing. Like, it was an amazing 3-0 comeback. Derek White saving game six. And then game seven was just an ultimate failure by the Celtics and Jalen Brown specifically, who had, I think, nine or eight turnovers. Or I think it was eight turnovers. Very embarrassing game for Jalen Brown. Tatum got injured in the first couple minutes. Jimmy freaking Butler was absolutely disgusting. And yeah, I mean... The Celtics, obviously, they have their issues with Jalen Brown on the roster sometimes. Like, his his assist-to-turnover ratio is not the best. I think he has, like, he almost averages three tur uh, turnovers to, like, 3.5 assists, which is not the best. But, I mean, like, I think he can improve as a playmaker. He drives really well to the paint. So, I mean, like, Jalen Brown, obviously, I think he's worth this. He's, like, he's worth pennies to them, I would say. I don't think he's actually, like, worthless at all. But, obviously, his playmaking isn't, like, the best. And you have a generational, I think you have generational talents on both ends. But like, obviously, Jalen Brown also, I think he did degree, like decrease like defensively, effort-wise, all that stuff. I think he was more a better scorer this year overall. But I mean, like defensively, I think he took a little bit of a step back compared to previous years. And yeah, I mean, that's that could be another issue with Jalen Brown's contract. Maybe he falls, maybe he falls back a little bit, falls down to earth. Maybe last year might have been a little bit of a, you know points per game buff you know i mean you never know it could be like that but obviously uh it's definitely it's definitely a possibility that jalen brown regresses a little bit but like overall the celtics over the last couple years haven't like made it over like a crazy you know playoffs haven't gone you know to the finals like they were supposed to last year uh they really did fumble that finals on or they did fumble that conference finals because they were literally the, after that they were the they were the team uh what is it they were the team with all uh home court advantage throughout the whole playoff so i mean like obviously it's very big of a fumble there but yeah i mean continuing on we can talk about the new roster the new improvements that they added i mean poising is definitely a great player next to robert williams to have because al horford's age and I think his play style really does mesh well with the Celtics. Like he can stretch the floor, he can defend the per or he can not defend the perimeter, defend the paint. Uh, with Robert Williams taking turns on that, honestly, I think that I think Porzingis is the ideal player to have in that situation. He could average 20, uh, maybe not with maybe not next year. Who knows? Maybe he averages 20 with the C's. But I mean that three-headed that three-headed horse is about to go crazy in Boston out there. Uh, Jordan Walsh also I think is also a pretty honor honest shout here uh, With the loss of Grant Williams and Marcus Smart I think the Celtics defense has declined a little bit and I think the addition of Jordan Walsh as a rookie as a as a really good like You know hype defender very hustle hustle player uh, I think that he is a really good addition to the Celtics like grit grit style, you know uh, Overall like Joe Mazzulla got his uh, he got his bench or no, he got his uh, what is it? assistant coaches on his bench now who he really does like so i'm happy to hear at least see that uh 
obviously, you know, the, the Celtics lost all their assistant coaches because of Ime Udoka. That whole situation was all a mess anyways, but... Uh, Joe Mazzulla's offense was definitely a really big was a really big thing for the Celtics last year and I think it will continue to be a really big thing for this year uh, Hopefully the defense improves. I think Sam Cassell is gonna be a really big ad for the defense overall um, Also, I've been seeing stuff about a Robert Williams jump shot uh, If that happens the league is screwed. No, I'm joking But if he develops a jump shot that just opens up the Celtics game a lot more and they could be a very pretty big threat in the East. I still think the Celtics are going to be around second or third in the East. I think that it could be, I think Miami, if they get Damian Lillard, uh, will probably be the best team in the East, uh, by far at least. I wouldn't say by far, actually. The Celtics are pretty, I mean, they did improve their roster. I mean, I can't lie. They did, I think they overall improved their roster, even though the I think the hustle of Marcus Smart is gonna be missed, obviously. But I think the main thing that the Celtics are be I think they're better than Milwaukee slightly though uh, but like I think it's because like the last year they had like I believe like I believe that they won three like two out of the three games right Boston won two out of three but Milwaukee in that third game they were facing a Celtics team without Jalen Brown and Tatum and almost lost in overtime to like Sam Hauser dropping 30 or something so I mean you can't really like a hundred percent like say the Bucks are better, but even I like I, I see the argument for it at least. The Bucks are a really good team. The Heat will be better, I believe, with Damian Lillard. Uh, Sixers, I couldn't see it, especially if they're losing James Harden for like basically nothing. Uh, the Nets are are gonna be a good team next year. I don't think they're. I think they were they were they did beat the Celtics like last year with Mikael, and I, I do commend them for that. I don't think so. Uh, Indiana, Cleveland. I uh, don't think now Cleveland actually did have like the number of the Celtics last year, but they were close all close games all like banger matchups But I mean the Celtics are probably I think are the top team in the East if Miami doesn't get Dame But it's a really close. It's really close with uh, what is it Milwaukee? And I think obviously if Miami gets Dame, they're not gonna be the best team in the East But I think that they can make the finals next year and I think they are gonna be the team to make a conference finals berth again uh Will they make the finals? We'll see. But obviously, the Celtics do have a really nice roster now, and I'm excited to see what they do next year. Uh, like again, guys, thank you guys for watching. Thank you all for the support. We really appreciate it. Uh, keep watching our videos. We are releasing a video every day, so I mean, like, it's gonna be it's gonna be banger content, obviously. And yeah, uh, peace out. Have a good one.